Hey folks, so today we're gonna talk about machetes. As many of you know, I've actually been down here living in the Caribbean for the last five or six months, and I find these a very interesting tool. Everywhere I go on this earth, you meet people who are using certain tools, and they've migrated to those tools for a certain reason, and machetes are no exception. I'm gonna go over three different types that I've been using, and then also I've seen locals use here in Puerto Rico and other parts of the Caribbean. They all have specific uses, and they all have pros and cons, so we'll go over that. And then I'll also go over what I use to sharpen them. So when talking about machetes, there's a few different variables that really distinguish the different types. Those are correlated to the uses that you'll see people using them for. Different machetes have different weight distribution in the blade. The other thing is just the length and then the overall weight. And that really has to do with your endurance with the machete. How easy it is to carry with you, the utility of that, but also how long you can use it. You know, a heavier one like this, it's actually quite a bit harder to use over a long period of time versus one like this. And that also plays in, as I mentioned, with length, right? A longer machete has its advantages, but that length will play in a little bit to your endurance with the machete. The other thing I've noticed with these even or more even distribution. You can see this has a little weight distribution in the front on this machete. A more even distribution like that kind of makes you a little more accurate uh, with it when you're doing full swings, right? Versus one that has a lot, of, a lot of heft in the front of it. All right, so one thing that's universally true about machetes, or at least, you know, what I would call like authentic machetes in the Caribbean, South America, Central America, is they're made out of cheap steel, soft, cheap steel, right? All of these machetes are these three machetes. Any of these are gonna cost you less than 20 bucks. And there's a reason that is, and that's because the steel is cheap. So it's essential that you know how to sharpen a machete. But the good part of that is if you're using a machete and you're sharpening it yourself, it's actually a great way to learn how to sharpen any tool, including your little precision, expensive knives, all the way up to just garden tools. A machete will show you how to sharpen things properly. So I'll get into that too. When you meet people in areas that use machetes as a primary tool, every single one of those guys knows how to sharpen well, right? And it's because they get practice and that's a great skill set to have. You know, they can sharpen a machete, but they can sharpen a shovel. You could give them your $700 hunting knife and they're gonna be very capable of sharpening that knife. Maybe not to hair splitting sharpness, but just getting it sharp for good practical use. They're gonna be able to do that freehanded because they've practiced on the soft metal a lot. I recommend anybody get one of these, start using it in your garden or whatever. And a byproduct of that is you'll really learn how to sharpen properly. All right, so this first First style machete. This is a bolo machete and it's a fairly common type and I carry it in this sheath. I'll just go over that real quick. This is actually sheath made out of fire hose and at some point I'll do a short video on how I make these. I used to use them for cross cut saws. I used to use them to cover chainsaw blades up in the mountains when I was guiding. You can go on eBay, you can go in other places on the internet and you can buy used wildland fire hose or just fire hose in general. You want this wide stuff. This is gonna have the most utility in terms of using it to sheath different types of tools and blades. The wider stuff's better. You know, I just cut it to the length I need and then I sew it just with an awl which is pretty simple. Once you know how to do it, you have to buy that tool, but it's, it's simple to do. I just seal it up with some sort of glue. And all that does is that just contains that threading, right? And I do that on both ends, just so when I take the machete in and out, you know, I don't, I don't have threads of a fire hose all over. And a lot of people actually think that these fire hoses are made out of asbestos, particularly the older ones. I've looked into it. In general, the vast, vast, vast majority of them are not made out of asbestos. Back to the bolo machete. So I find this, for my uses, which is, you know, cutting up coconuts for the kids, cutting through brush and not real intense stuff. I'm not going through, you know, impenetra impenetrable jungle uh, with my kids. I find this to be a very good kind of in-between machete. And the bolo machete, it's pretty even in here. It's not real long. It's got a little extra weight in here, but it's not extreme. So this extra weight, what that allows me to do, and I'll go over the kind of cutting stroke with the machete, but generally you want your machete to to roll in your hand like that. You don't want to like death grip it in like this, right? That's what a lot of people do. You actually want to just grab it like that, fold these over kind of loosely, and you want this kind of action, okay? So that little extra weight right here, when you're cutting through, you know, maybe a little thicker type of vegetation, not necessarily like a big thick sugar cane or anything like that, 
but you know, smaller canes and grasses, this is gonna give you a little more momentum to pull through and cut through stuff. It's a nice size, it's kind of an in-between type of machete, what I would say. You know, good for little utility jobs. Other thing that I find, if these get a ton of weight on them, like I'll show you with the cane machete, it's hard to be accurate with them. So if you've got a coconut in your hand or something, most aspects of cutting up a coconut, I prefer kind of a thinner, lighter machete that I can be more accurate with, right? Okay, instead of a heavy machete. So this is a good in-between. And a big part of every tool is just having it when you need it. And this is a convenient size, right? You can see how long it is. I can keep this just on the side of my seat in my vehicle inside this sheath and it's a very convenient size. Now you've got what's called a bush machete. And this very much has a has a equally distributed blade the whole way. Right, and the other thing is your edge actually comes all the way around. On these bolo machetes, what you'll find because of that rounded edge, you know, you don't, you kind of lose your tip, so you don't have a tip. So if you need a tip, it's good to have, you know, this bush machete. These machetes here, they're really ideal for cutting through vegetation that is thick but not heavy. It's not real cane heavy because you don't have a bunch of weight, right? You don't have a bunch of weight to carry you through that thick stuff. But the nice part about it is it's longer, right? And then it's not that heavy because there's not, you know, massive weight distribution up in here. You know, it's not three times as wide and three times as heavy. It's just nice and slick. And you can use this get through thick stuff that's not really, really stiff. You can be very effective and you're gonna have a lot of endurance with it, right? And again, you can be pretty accurate because that weight, that weight's evenly distributed. So again, like coconuts and stuff, if you've got them down on the ground or something, this is pretty handy, particularly green coconuts where you don't need the weight to get through the the skin, these bush machetes are pretty handy. The disadvantage of this type of machete in general is length. This is actually a shorter one of this version, but you can tell, you can see it's quite a bit shorter. If you're thinking about carrying these in a backpack or even in your vehicle, you know, that extra four or five inches of length, it's actually a fairly big deal, right? I can, I can stick this down behind my seat and you know, the handle's barely showing. I can stick it in a backpack. You're not even gonna be able to see it. You know, it's not hanging out the zippers or anything like that, whereas, this one, that little extra length, you know, your handle handle is going to be up in the way, depending on where you where you put it. If you put it in a backpack, most likely it's going to have to be poking out a zipper. Part of the reason that you have to have length on this type of machete is you don't have a real heavy, wide blade, so they make up for that with length, so you can at least get some power um, out the blade because of the length. This is probably the most common machete that you see, you know, in South America and other parts of Latin America. Now this next one, the cane machete, you see this a lot in Puerto Rico, and that's because you know for years there was a culture of sugar cane, and this was primarily used as an agriculture tool. But this machete, for specific things, it's way better than those two machetes, and that's why I have it. So the cane machete, it uses weight distribution to the extreme instead of length to get that, that power. And so just holding it up here, it's much more fatiguing for me. It doesn't have like the balance in my hand. So the big downside of this, from my perspective, if you're using this for you know bushwhacking over a long period of time or whatever, unlike these other machetes, your endurance with this machete is gonna be way less. You're gonna get fatigued. You can get through really, really heavy sugarcane with it. I mean, these machetes, like a bush machete, you know, a bolo, maybe if you're hitting the cane with the tip here, with all that, with that little extra weight, that's gonna get you through thick cane to some extent. But a lot of times these type of machetes, you're in really thick cane, even if those machetes are very sharp and you think they're gonna slice in, unless you have an angle, like if you come at cane perfectly perpendicular, a lot of times these machetes will bounce off. Whereas this, even perpendicular, it, it takes really thick cane to stop this. And so it'll break through that stuff uh, very, very easily. And the same thing with coconuts, like dry coconuts, a lot of times, even with sharp machetes, your machete will bounce. If you don't have a little angle, even, even with a little angle, your machete will bounce off the dry coconut. Whereas with this type of machete, that won't happen because of that weight. That weight snaps into it and you, it's just way more power and it's not gonna bounce, it's gonna slice right in. And I find this particularly the case if you're husking dry coconuts, this machete is way better than these machetes, right? And I'll do, a, I'll do a separate video on coconuts, but in general, green coconuts, I'm gonna use this type of machete where I can be accurate. I'm just gonna cut the top off where the kids can drink the water out. And then maybe after that, I'll just slice the whole coconut in half and they can go for the meat. But if I wanna husk the coconut from the beginning, like a drier coconut, 
this is my go-to because I can, I can get this in there a lot easier. And the other thing is because that wide blade, and this, this, is, this was not the intention of this when it was made, but because of that wide blade, when you get it into a coconut husk and you, you slam it in there, you actually have a lot more prying ability with the blade like this. And I'll show you that here. Canes in particular, you know, or branches, you know, that take, you know, not, you're, not, you're not macheting through basically grasses. You're actually macheting through serious material. This kind of machete is much better. And that's what the original application of it was for. So obviously it's better for that, right? The small cons are just that endurance aspect and then accuracy. I find that I'm not as accurate with this either. And you're probably wondering why there's kind of this hook here. It looks just like a gut hook that you see on some hunting knives. The reason they have that is just a utility perspective. They can cut through the cane and that cane will still sometimes be laying in their way. And then they can just kind of basically backhand with that hook and they can pull the cane out of their way to their side. So that's just a little utility hook there. All right, so that covers the different models of machetes, at least the ones that I see used most commonly. And that covers almost all your different usages. You've got your bolo machete, which is kind of in between, kind of does everything. You've got your bush machete, which is really, you know, for bushwhacking through maybe thick vegetation, but not real strong vegetation. And then you've got your cane machete, which is for serious vegetation and when you need serious chopping power. If there's any other models of machete in terms of length, shape, any of that, that you've been exposed to and you like for the applications that you're using them for, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your guys' perspective on it. There's this tendency when you first start using a machete just to death grip it and just have like a, you know, just a stiff angle like this, right? But actually the proper way to do it is use the momentum of the machete pivoting. And so the way I do that is just put it right here between your pointer finger and thumb and that's your main grip, right? So it rocks, right? And you use these just for support and control, but don't, you know, grip down real tight like that. You want those to be loose. So as you swing the machete, it, it flips with the weight. You know, you want to have this top uh, tight so it doesn't fly out of your hands and use this just to control it. And then on your stroke, it'll whip. There's a lot of momentum when you let it whip like that. If you're like this, you're holding the machete and you're not getting that forward momentum out of the whip. So I hold this, still like this, but get it to roll with my wrist. People who use these a lot, you notice they do that. They always use that type of stroke or they fatigue out because they're using so much extra power. And the same thing with the cane machete is the same deal. And you, it's more, you have to control it more because there's so much weight in the blade, right? But you want that type of stroke instead of fighting it like this. All right, so let's talk about the hot topic of sharpening, right? And like I said, sharpening machetes is a great way to learn how to sharpen everything. So, you know, look at my background, you know, a, a hunting guide up in the mountains, even a hunting guide up in the mountains can learn how to sharpen by sharpening machetes. Anybody, it doesn't matter. And the reason sharpening machetes is a great way to learn how to sharpen is they're soft steel and they're big, right? So you can feel that burr when you create it. And that concept will get in your mind. If you want a long discussion of sharpening knives, you can go check out my sharpening video that I've got on the channel. Go check it out. It's more hunting knife centric, but it goes over the same concept that I'll go over in brief here. So with machetes, but honestly, this applies to knives and every other tool also, you don't need sophisticated sharpening tools, right? With machetes in particular, or something that you don't need to have, you know, hair splitting sharp, you can sharpen them with a file. I don't care what people say out there, lots of folks sharpen them with files. A matter of fact, most locals sharpen their machetes with files, but you can use other, you know, what, what the knife world is gonna call kind of crude sharpening methods. Methods, those work great for machetes, and the truth is they work great for hunting knives even too. But I'll go over a few of those here. You can just buy one of these type of little paddle sharpeners. On a machete type of tool, I'm gonna just use the coarse side. This is actually a foot knife sharpener. I'll put a link of it in the description, but this is a pretty handy, handy one. This is a very common sharpener you can find everywhere, DMT paddles. Again, I'm just gonna use the coarse blue side. Generally on a machete type of tool, I'm never gonna use the red fine side. And then you've got this one. This is very common and these are marketed as tools for sharpening like gardening tools, that sort of thing. And the reason is it has a small little file head on it here. This thing will take metal off like you, you won't believe. And that's why it works good on like shears and scissors and stuff like that where you need to get that small file in. But you'll see a lot of machete user, users in Central America, South America, here in the Caribbean, they use this little tool to sharpen their machetes. 
And the reason is obvious, right? It's small and handy, and you can take a lot of metal off quickly. The one downside of this type of sharpener, from my perspective, is just safety. Because it's such a small surface, you're working along the edge, it's very easy to slip and cut your knuckles and that sort of thing, so I don't use it, and that's personal preference. You'll see them grab it here, and they're just gonna run a burr up like this. And you can see when I'm doing that, like even like pretty light pressure there, it's pulling a burr up on that edge. But you can also see what I'm talking about. If you use too much pressure and you slip, you, know, you slip, you're gonna go into your hand here, right? And one way to mitigate that with a small little sharpening tool like this is you can always sharpen going away to get your burr up. But that means this way, you're gonna have to do it like this or like this, and it's just, it's just tricky for me. I like something a little distance I can get away get away from the blade. Basic sharpening technique with machetes, and this applies to all tools and all knives. The best way to do it, particularly when you're learning, run your sharpening tool across the edge a few times, and with the soft metal, you're gonna start building up a burr on the opposing side, and you'll start to feel it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna feel that in some parts of that edge, your burr's starting to develop, and it's large already, and other parts of the edge you're not gonna feel that burr. And what that tells you is that even though you might think you're being very symmetric and even about how you're running that sharpening tool across that edge, you're not, right? And so, as an example, if you notice that no burr is developing at the base of the blade, but it is at the tip, it probably means that you're flat at the base and then as you go to the tip, you're getting a steeper angle, right? You want to get that angle the same the whole way. And what's nice about a machete, and you'll see a lot of people sharpen them this way, is they'll actually work sections of the machete. And they're doing that because they know that if they run a real long stroke, just their body mechanics, it's very hard to hold a consistent angle and get that burr to build up along the edge very evenly. Once you have a burr evenly across that machete, you'll kind of learn your own technique. One, you'll either adjust that stroke or you're gonna learn how to sharpen sections at a time. Once you get a consistent burr across the whole edge, then you can turn it over, run a burr off the other side again, get that consistent edge on that side. And again, because it's gonna be a different stroke, because you've turned the blade over, you might actually get the opposite effect. You pull a burr really quick on the base, but not at the tip, and it's just because your stroke is different, right? So it's a good way to learn how to sharpen a knife because you'll realize how inconsistent you are with that stroke. And on this soft metal, sometimes what you'll do is you'll pull a really big burr up and you start swapping it back and forth, and it'll stand up. It'll just be like a straight burr standing up, and what you can do a lot of the times is you can take your machete, and it's just kind of like stroping. It's a lot easier to do this with a longer sharpening tool or long file, that sort of thing, is basically you can strope that burr off, right? And some folks do sharpen this way too. They just strope backwards. The other thing you can do is you can just get this into a piece of wood, not real hard, don't slam it into the piece of wood, just get it in there where it's edged it past the bark into, you know, through the cambium layer of the wood and just slide the machete like this and it'll just strip that burr off. The concept is where all the value is, right? Use your sharpening tool to get a consistent edge on here, right? And the consistent edge is gonna be related to a consistent burr that you're gonna pull and you're gonna feel on that opposite side, flip it over, get that burr to consistently develop on the other side. If you wanna be precise, you can use lighter and lighter strokes and you can get that burr you know, just standing up in there until it basically falls off. On machetes that are kind of the definition of a blunt instrument, you know, just a couple times, turning the burr to one side, then the other side, knocking it off, you're done, that thing's sharp. You're gonna sharpen it again anyways pretty soon, depending on your usage of it and what you're cutting. Um, so don't worry about it too much, but it'll give you a very good feel on how to sharpen these type of tools. If you guys have any other sharpening techni techniques or tools that you specifically use to sharpen machetes, leave it in the comments so everybody knows about it. All right, folks, if you got value out of this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you next time.